Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Pitt County Board of Health meeting for February 2015. At this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, item on the agenda, first off, is any public comments, and I don't believe there is any registered. Uh, next item on the agenda, I'd like to change the agenda uh, format. I need a motion to move the election of officers to the end of or after the closed section. So moved. Second. I had a motion to modify the agenda. Uh, any dis questions or discussions? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So we're gonna move that to the end of the closed session or after the closed session. Next item on the agenda is the minutes from um, last month's meeting, January 13th, 2015. You have a copy of the meetings or the minutes from that meeting. Um, if everybody's in agreement. I need a motion to approve. I move that we approve as second. Written. Got a motion to approve in a second. Any discussions? All in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Opposed? A motion passed on the <clears throat> minutes. Uh, next item on the agenda is physical report. Thank and you, Mr. You Chairman. Full. Board members, you have the January. 31 financial report uh, in your packet. Not a lot of surprises, not a lot of changes in this report. We're just one month closer to the end of the fiscal year. I will uh, just highlight that the unadjusted uh, revenue of four or five million four hundred and fifty one thousand uh, at the end of January compares to expenditures of four million nine hundred and eighteen thousand which gives us uh, about a $533,000 surplus prior to taking in the, the timing issues that we normally have. Once we take into the effect those timing issues, the surplus drops down to about 215,000. Just some uh, highlights, the Medicaid revenue, we uh, reported about a $17,000 negative variance uh, last month year to date, we've uh, improved that to about a $14,000 negative variance. Uh, this month, we'll continue to work on that. Uh, that is a, about the only unusual item. I will say that we did get a notification on our Medicaid call settlement. Uh, that is gonna come in at about $708,000 compared to the budgeted amount of $533,000. So that's a, a pretty significant bump that we'll see in June when we actually receive that funding. Uh, compared to where we were uh, 12 months ago at the end of uh, December, or I'm sorry, January 2014, at that point in time, our adjusted surplus or deficit was actually a deficit of about $138,000 compared to a surplus of about 215,000 now. If you'll remember last year, we went deep into the fiscal year with the rollout of NC tracks getting Medicaid revenue in the door. It wasn't a matter that we weren't submitting the claims, it was just NC tracks was rolling out and our, our revenue stream, Medicaid, was really delayed. So that really is the basis for that improvement year to year. And I'll be glad to answer any, any questions that you may have. No, no surprises, just about what we would expect to do. Thank you, John. Um, I would need a motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. I got a motion to approve and a second. Uh, is there any further discussions on the physical report? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed on the physical report. Um, before we head into the whole business, I'd like to welcome the, we've got some nursing students from ECU. I'd like to welcome y'all here. Um, Glad to see you here and glad to take a part in the community. Um, as far as old business, I think you're up, Mr. Dr. Mar. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we wanted to uh, bring you up to date on where we are with the tobacco-free parks rule. As, uh, we've been discussing this now for over a year, actually, and uh, a lot of work has gone into this. Uh, as uh, requested by the board, we uh, went to all the municipalities throughout the county and asked them for their support of a resolution on, that would uh, uh, address this issue. Uh, 
we're very concerned about uh, children growing up in parks where um, not only they're exposed to uh, cigarettes, but now they're being exposed to the hazards of, of uh, uh, electronic nicotine delivery devices and the liquids. Uh, these are toxic liquids that contain uh, concentrated amounts of nicotine. And the reports that are coming in from the um, poison control centers across the country are really showing that uh, these are very hazardous to small children. So uh, we have uh, gotten support from uh, nine of the ten municipalities in the county. Actually, we've gotten support from all the municipalities that actually have parks at this time. Um, so we're pleased that uh, they have uh, supported the resolution that we took to them. Uh, now the work is back to this board uh, to just uh, approve the rule. Um, I've presented to you tonight two drafts, uh, potential drafts of, of the uh, potential rule, I should say, two drafts of the potential rule. Um, this has been done with consultation with uh, state public health staff as well as some help from our county attorney as well and, and, and from our staff here at the health department. So um, we don't need to make a decision tonight, Mr. Chairman. This is, uh, these are drafts that can be uh, further edited. So uh, we want you all to take a look at these uh, to make changes as you see fit. Uh, contact me if you would with those changes and we can discuss those. Uh, I want to run, run this uh, again by the, by the attorneys before it uh, actually comes to a vote. Uh, once we come up with a final edition of the, what the rules should look like, um, we need at least 10 days um, to post it uh, at the health department and also at the county clerk's office. And we also will put a notice in uh, the newspapers that this rule will come before the, this board at the subsequent meeting. Um, so it could be done as early as, as March. Uh, I just remind folks that uh, because this is uh, under a law that was passed by the General Assembly in 2010, that law required uh, any rule from the Board of Health that addresses um, tobacco issues to go also to the county commissioners for an approval. Um, but it will remain a Board of Health rule and therefore uh, does uh, is inclusive of all the municipalities, so it will include all the parks throughout the county, whether they're in uh, uh, a town, a city, a village, or uh, in the rural area of the county. When do you need uh, um, when do you need by a date for our comments? Uh, well, as long as we have everything will done before ten days before a meeting. Now, if it's not, if we if we're still uh, 10 days before the March meeting. I believe the March meeting is March the... March 10th. March okay. 10th. So, so can we uh, by March 1st, if we don't have the final edition done by then, we'll have to be looking at the April meeting. So in the next, soonest. I would say in the next two weeks, we need to get you these comments that back. Would, that would okay. be ideal if you'd like to address it at yes. the next meeting. So for our members, board members, please have any comments about tomorrow by then. All right. If I could ask a question, Dr. Morrow, just to clarify, when you said municipalities, you're talking about the mayor, the town councils, or that of the various townships that approved? They have all approved, the, well, nine out of the ten, all the ones that have parks, have approved the, uh, the, the resolution that we took to them that was in support of this board taking action to pass a, a countywide rule. Um, you know, the other way it would have been done was piecemeal where each Greenville would have had to pass an ordinance, then Farmville would have had to pass one. Mm -hmm. So it would have been uh, much more complicated and I think uh, uh, not as, not as uh, easy for the citizens. Right. Any further discussions on this? Questions? Um, Dr. Morrow, one municipality had not included the e-cigarettes. Has that been amended to in now include? Yes. So all that was the, that was okay. corrected. Uh, the, the one municipality that did not support the resolution was Falkland. Okay. Um, and uh, but they do not have any parks. They don't have any parks at this time. Okay. <coughs> okay. If there's no 
further discussion is on the tobacco free parks. I'd um, like to move some new business, budget update, and activity report. I think that's you. That's me again. Uh, Thank you. Um, I included uh, the budget calendar to the county's budget calendar in your packet, and I just want to go over some, some important dates uh, related to that budget. 5 p.m. March the 2nd, which is a Monday, is when the budget is due to be to the due to county finance. If history proves uh, it repeats itself, I will be working on that budget up until 459 March the 2nd to turn it in. That's usually how it works. But what that does mean is that I'll have to pre prepare the budget and submit it to the county manager and his staff prior to our March meeting. Uh, March 10 meeting, I will bring that budget uh, to this board for your review and approval. After that is done, uh, we will continue as new information comes in to continue to refine the budget until Dr. Morrow and I go and meet with the county manager and his staff to discuss that budget. And that occurs for us on April the 16th. So we'll actually have our March Board of Health meeting and our April Board of Health meeting before I can come back with any kind of indication on which way the county manager is is leaning on our budget but uh, so I'll keep you informed as as that new information comes to me I have a question yes sir would it be prudent or helpful for us possibly to consider delaying our meeting until after your meeting mm -hmm. it, as a financial officer I, I don't see a need to, for that so it doesn't make this but protracted. Any changes this board uh, wants to make to that budget, I can always, with an addendum, uh, get it to the it. county manager. Yeah. I th that's probably the best way to do that. You're not anticipating any major deviations or, or changes to the budget from? Uh, the executioner's face is, is always well hidden. Uh, <laughs> I don't, at this point in time, I don't see any. I don't see any. There, there can always be a surprise, though. Uh, we're, we're just now, in fact, today, we just started getting the budgetary estimates for each program from the state. So if those uh, budgetary estimates hold true to what they were in previous years, uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't see any big changes. Hopefully, if, if uh, you've listened to the Board of Commissioners, and, and to the, uh, the chair of the commissioners, one of their priorities this year is to reestablish, reinstitute the merit pay increases, which really is, is critical, uh, not just for the health department, for, for all the departments, to manage those human resources uh, efficiently. So that's the, the big change we'll, we'll see. Good change. Good change, please. <coughs> Okay, thanks for the information on the and, budget. And Mr. Chairman, I've got a, a, just a couple of more things I would like to sure. uh, present to you. Let's, let's do this one first, if I can find it here. One of the things we talked about at a strategic planning uh, a couple of weeks ago was the kind of the broad brush stroke of what activities the health department uh, performs. And the health department is, is built around about 33 individual revenue and cost centers. Uh, so we have to produce 33 individual budgets that happen to balance. They all have different revenue streams, different expenditures. But uh, so we wouldn't get lost in the forest by looking at each individual tree. I wanted to put a little something together for you based on the broad brush strokes of activities that the health department does. And, and this uh, pie chart is of the adopted 2015 budget, the budget we're currently under. And if you break uh, the health department out into well, what's driving that overall budget, you can see that administration is about 11% of the budget. Environmental health is 14%. We just working our way around. Health promotions, very little. About 3% of our budget goes to health promotions. Uh, clinic operations. About 40%, 39% of our, of our total budget relates to providing personal health care to individuals. 
you get around, we WIC, 9% of the total budget, some outreach programs, 8%, and then some grants, and grants to me are defined as no county dollars whatsoever. They're either funded through uh, Viden Medical Centers Foundation, or we had the NFP, which is a large grant by KP Reynolds, Blue Cross Blue Shield. So about 16% of our total budget relates to those grants. Uh, if we look at FTEs, 119.65 FTEs, we start administration, very few FTEs if you really look at, at what it takes for administration. Uh, environmental health has 17 FTEs. Uh, we get around to health promotions, they only have four, so a very small percentage. Clinic, 48.8 FTEs, about 41% of our FTEs, then WIC 14%, outreach 10%, the grants 13%. So again, when you slice it with FTEs, the clinic is, is, is the biggest piece of that pie. If we look at what drives the need for county dollars, uh, again, we'll start with administration 22%, environmental health about 27%, health promotions, small, small slice of the pie, 6%. Clinic operations, again, are accounting for 43% for of the $4.3 million that the county ponies up for the health department. WIC and outreach, they're almost all grant or federally funded, 1% each. So when we talk about the budget, you know, it's easy to look at 33 individual revenue and cost centers, but when you step back and look, th these are the pretty consistent, regardless of how you slice it, this is what's driving, driving the train. So I just wanted to give the board a, a kind of a feel uh, for that. Thank you, John. And I got one more slide, Mr. Chairman. All right. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. And this is uh, something that was asked for uh, a couple of meetings ago, and you've got this in your packet. And, and what this slide is, I took the clinic visits unduplicated clients coming to the clinic and clinic visits, the first six months of this current fiscal year, which is the left-hand group of numbers, July 1, 2014 through December 31, 2014, and compared it to uh, the same information the six months, first six months of the prior fiscal year. And as you can see, and these reports are coming right out of our health information system, we've had about a 12 to 10 percent decrease in clinic activity. Most likely that is due to, uh, you know, we had early retirements a couple of years ago. Those drove the, you know, we didn't replace all those, and we've had some clinic vacancies uh, here lately. So just wanted to get that. And this is a report that I'll try to do t a couple of times a year. Um, uh, it might be a, a lag a month or two to get, make sure everything is put into the system but we'll start giving you this information just to give you some more information on, on activity of the health department. Thank you for the information. Um, next item, um, have some information on the secretary's visit. You want to? Yeah, I'll do that, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. um, we were pleased to um, uh, have Secretary Aldona Vosh uh, from North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services uh, at our department last Friday. She had come to town and uh, was visiting uh, during the Give Kids a Smile event uh, that was uh, put on by the dentist here locally and uh, uh, it was a very successful event again this year um, and thanks to uh, East North Orthodontics and all the dentists who put their time into that and all the volunteers, many volunteers from throughout the county. But uh, Secretary Bosch had a very pleasant visit over there. You probably saw the article that was in the Daily Reflector about that. Um, after she left there, she came to our health department and spent about an hour with us, uh, had a very good conversation, met with our management team. Um, uh, Dr. Kirknell, you mentioned the, the budget. Uh, we did not hear very positive news about the budget. <coughs> she had some real concerns that she expressed about some of the federal cuts that they're they're hearing may be coming down the line again this year. Um, I think again that we're some of what we're seeing is that the shifting in the public health funds has occurred somewhat in response to the uh, the uh, Affordable Care Act, 
some of that was expected to be taken up by uh, expansion of Medicaid by all the states. And of course, North Carolina was one of those states that has not expanded Medicaid. So we're, uh, we're getting sort of hit double uh, whammy with uh, public health funds being cut from the feds. We're not getting the Medicaid expansion uh, and we're not getting the revenues uh, for uh, the uh, other folks that might be insured. Um, so so um, we're anxious, I would say, at this point about what the federal cuts may look like. Um, right now we're not anticipating the uh, probably substantial state cuts, uh, but we don't know what the General Assembly will do. So there's still that potential. I think that's what John was referencing a minute ago. So um, uh, we, you know, you just saw our budget. We're in, we're in fairly good shape. I think uh, I think we've been doing pretty conservative budgeting, um, uh, but we are concerned with some of the programs that that potentially could get cut as a result of federal cutbacks or of state funds being cut. So we'll wait to see on that. Um, but we did uh, we did enjoy having Secretary Vosh here, and and uh, um, as I said, had a had a very good conversation about. I think she was impressed with our department. Um, we talked about where we're moving with uh, um, uh, some of our automation and um, trying to integrate public health with primary care services in the community, um, and. Uh, I'll just skip ahead if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman. We talked specifically about electronic health records, which I have in my report tonight, but um, uh, we are moving ahead with that, uh, getting to electronic health records, and we hope to actually have our health department connected electronically with the <coughs> free clinics and some of the other clinics in the area and, and also with the hospital. So uh, we're excited about the potential there, um, but that is a, a Big, big job. It's going to be stressful on our staff uh, getting to that, getting to that stage. Um, but uh, I think we're we've waited about as long as we can wait. Um, we're probably one of the last departments in the state to to move to an electronic record. Um, and uh, uh, physicians and and healthcare people who work in the electronic health records can tell you. Um, it's 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 not nirvana. <laughs> it doesn't solve all the problems in patient care, um, but uh, uh, we're at an age and uh, a time now that we've just got to move to it. And I think we're we're in a good stage. I think in terms of of having seen some of the the um, others go before us and some of the mistakes have been made. So I hope we won't won't uh, have to suffer some of the some of the pains and uh, problems that the the other folks have had with electronic health records, but um, uh, we're excited about that possibility anyway. Well, if you want to move right, if you want to move right into the health director's report, yeah. So go ahead. Yeah. Um, I mentioned just uh, accreditation. We do have. Uh, we're in the midst of our community health uh, needs assessment. We're doing that in coordination with uh, Vidant Medical Center. Uh, we're doing that every three years now. We started uh, uh, back in December and uh, uh, are doing focus groups uh, throughout the community right now, collecting primary data and uh, uh, secondary data. So we'll be doing that throughout the spring and summer, um, and it'll probably be uh, late summer before we have that finalized. Um, once that's done, <coughs> once the needs assessment is completed, then we'll um, uh, move to create a community health improvement plan. Uh, and our, our plan is to have a single community health improvement plan for Pitt County. Um, and from that, uh, various entities will come up with their own strategic plans, um, um, much like what we did a few years ago. Uh, we did have the strategic planning session with the Board of Health uh, in January, um, Saturday morning on the 24th of January, um, where we reviewed our, our mission and vision. Um, we did not change our mission. Our mission is to, to protect, promote, and assure the health of all the people in Pitt County. 
the vision did uh, get some alterations and that's being edited um, as we speak. Uh, the value statements was the other piece of that that we talked about and um, uh, we had our general staff meeting uh, early Friday morning and I spoke to our staff about those values. We reviewed the values are actually uh, 20 years old uh, uh, this year. Uh, they were created by our staff, uh, the staff that was current in 1995. Um, but I have to say they're, they're really excellent value statements. Uh, a lot of good work went into that back in 1995 and we still have some employees around that were there then and, and remembered that process um, and, and remember, it, uh, remember it positively. Uh, so what we want to do is, is uh, do that process again. So I've asked all my staff at general staff last Friday to review the value statements and to, uh, we're going to be meeting in our five divisions uh, and different work units and teams um, and editing those value statements, adding to, deleting from, whatever the, the staff wants to do with those. But uh, I think that's something that the staff's looking forward to. We've got a lot of new staff on board. Uh, we've had um, significant turnover, as you can imagine, in the last 20 <coughs> years. And uh, as John mentioned just a little while ago, we've had a lot of retirements here recently. So we've got a lot of uh, young uh, staff that um, I think will um, get into that process very well and, and uh, help, help build new value statements and a uh, help us uh, achieve our vision and mission as we move along. Um, I did also want to mention staffing. We are, uh, we have about eight vacancies right now uh, in the department. Um, several of those are being recruited for right now. Uh, so we hope to have those filled pretty soon. Um, I'll step over here to the slide. I want to show you some information on influenza and measles. I have for you. We just talk about um, <clears throat> the measles outbreak right now. Uh, first, did that come up for y'all? Did it disappear? Where'd it go? There we go. Um, most everyone's heard about the outbreak that started in California uh, in January. There were um, right now that spread to 17 states. It's been a fairly rapid spread. Uh, it went from uh, California to about two states and four states within about a week, and then it was six states and eight states, and now it's up to 17. Um, and up to 121 cases, uh, about 85% of those cases, or 103 of those cases, are directly tied into the um, amusement park outbreak that started in, in California at Disneyland. So uh, you can see, though, in the graph uh, below here that uh, this is where we are right now. So it's 121 cases. Last year, we had many, many more cases. Um, actually, about 300, well, almost 400 of these cases shown here in 2014 were due to one area in Ohio uh, where there was a um, uh, collection of Amish people who had not been vaccinated. So uh, we know that this is a totally vaccine-preventable disease. Uh, measles is very serious. Um, but if people are vaccinated, we can protect everyone. Uh, the problem particularly is for young infants and children uh, who are unable to get vaccinated before uh, 12 months or typically don't get vaccinated until they're one year of age. So um, small children that uh, become infected with measles can have very serious complications from it, including death. Um, so we just urge everyone to to make sure their children are vaccinated. Um, you may have seen in the paper, we do have uh, a both re a religious and medical exemption in North Carolina, but there's a lot of discussion nationally about uh, some of these exemptions. Uh, uh, we don't 
have a lot of children uh, exempted, but uh, there's a, over 150 in our public schools here in Pitt County. That sounds like a lot, but it really is less than uh, uh, less than one percent. So um, we think we're very well protected right now. But uh, if people don't uh, continue to vaccinate their children. Um, and take this seriously, then, then I think we could see outbreaks like we're seeing in other states. Or if our laws were to get changed, uh, where, it, uh, where uh, vaccines were not required like they are in North Carolina. One thing I would clarify too, uh, a lot of people still think that, that, you, that children aren't required to be vaccinated until they become school age. That's, that's not true anymore. That was true at one time in North Carolina. But the law was changed years ago. The, the law now states that all children must be vaccinated age appropriately. So technically, if a child is uh, two years of age and hasn't had a measles shot, um, they're delinquent on vaccines. Uh, so and, uh, we, we don't have the resources in public health that we've had in the past in terms of helping make sure that that happens. Um, so we're trying to get, trying to get better at doing that. Uh, electronic records is one of the things that really can help us do that. There's an immunization registry here in North Carolina, uh, but it's uh, in some ways it's becoming easier to track children for vaccinations. In other ways, it's getting harder uh, because uh, there are a lot more parents that don't remember the seriousness of some of these vaccine preventable diseases and therefore, for some reason or another, either choose to delay or choose not to get their children vaccinated at all. But it doesn't matter if the child is in public school or private school or homeschooled, they still are under the same state requirement for vaccination. So if you don't have any questions about that, I'll, I'll uh, move. Not a question, but I think people need to realize that measles is not a seasonal situation, not like the flu season. Measles can be contracted anytime, anywhere, by anyone at any time of the year. Yeah, that's that's a great point, Dr. Taylor. It's <laughs> um, and most of the measles that we've seen is imported, uh, particularly related to um, the Philippines has had a huge outbreak in the last few years, so folks that are traveling. But measles is very prevalent in other countries where vaccinations are either difficult to access or they're not required. Uh, but it's very prevalent in parts of Europe, Asia, Africa, and, and in the Pacific. So uh, we're fortunate to live in a, in a, a nation that takes immunizations uh, seriously and, and protects all of us. I wanted to show you the um, the map of the current. We I brought the map last year, or excuse me, last month, um, and showed you, and it was totally all brown. Um, and I just wanted to show you that. Uh, we have had some improvement in some of those lighter areas like Tennessee. We are still showing widespread activity here in North Carolina, but uh, the influenza-like illness rates have declined uh, significantly from a few weeks ago. Uh, you can see this is the, the week ending January 31st, so it's a little bit behind. Um, and where we are right now in North Carolina, uh, again, we're still all dealing with uh, type A H3N2 disease mostly uh, is the prevalent disease across the country right now. Um, we're up to 152 deaths uh, in North Carolina from flu associated deaths. Uh, there were nine uh, in that last week of January, there were nine new deaths. Uh, about uh, 125 of those are um, in the elderly. And here's the report here I can show you. So the red line here is um, 
is this year. You can see we got up to almost 9% of influenza-like illness. That's the percent of vis visits to outpatient uh, uh, medical care providers. Um, and it was, it was above, you can see the, the gray line is 2012 and 13, and this blue line down here is uh, last year. So it was above where we were two years ago. It's come down significantly. We got a little bit of a blip there in the end of January, and it looks like it's heading down and continuing to head down for February, which is absolutely wonderful news um, because I'm sure everyone knows somebody who's had the flu in the last couple of months um, here in Pitt County. It's been very prevalent. So, uh, But it's not too late to get a flu shot. I keep getting asked that question. Um, we still may see H1N1 flu this year. Uh, we also, uh, some of the data shows that there is a little bit of, of type B flu. I can show you that here. Right there, you can barely see at the top of that, there's a little green line. That's the type B flu positive test in, in the state public health lab uh, that last week in January. Uh, so we may still see some more type B flu outbreaks. That uh, type B flu is in the vaccine, so people should continue to get vaccinated if they're not already vaccinated, uh, even if they had flu, uh, because uh, they could get the other types of flu as we go through the season. Any questions on influenza? Did I understand you to say that we may see a resurgence of the H1N1? Well, we're seeing H3N2 right. is the prevalent one right now. Um, that's type A H3 is this red you see here. Right. And that's that's been the prevalent one. The other ones are untyped, the yellow you see are type A untyped. But those are probably mostly H3s also, and probably H3N2, they just were not subtyped. So we just don't have the data on those. But uh, H1N1, uh, is the one that was so prevalent about seven years ago. Mm -hmm. I think it was 2009, 2010, so about five, six years ago. Um, so it, it still could come around. And that one is also in the vaccine. Mm -hmm. So people, if they get vaccinated, should be well protected against H1N1, as well as the type B that's also in the, in the vaccine. <clears throat> if I could just comment, the, uh, <clears throat> there's been no change in the vaccine strain for H1N1, so we basically have gotten six uh, initial dose in 2009 and another five or six uh, boosters, so to speak, over the year. So that may be why, <clears throat> why we're, we've contained that one for the time being. We typically have a, uh, on those graphs you showed earlier, there's typically a little bump in late February, and mostly that's, they use, is generally type B. So uh, we've continued our restrictions at the Vidant <clears throat> facilities because of that. Um, we see it every year, and uh, as soon as it's clear that the, these numbers are not going to go back up again, then we'll consider removal of our additional restrictions. Thank you, Dr. Ramsey. The uh, other thing I just wanted to mention, we've got, actually, I've got my notes back in my mentioned our staffing we do um, I did also want to mention a, a grant that we've recently applied for it's a Blue Cross Blue Shield Foundation of North Carolina uh, it's a capacity building grant for fifteen thousand dollars and we have, have a team together um, here in Pitt County that have folks from um, Access East uh, East Carolina University um, Vidant Medical Center, the Intergenerational Center, um, Pitt Partners for Health. We're trying to address uh, with this planning grant, we're looking at diabetes prevention program. So I'll uh, keep you informed as that moves along. Um, I also just wanted to uh, make note, uh, we've uh, 
been doing some activities around Heart Month in February, and we've got National Nutrition Month coming up, so we've got some activities planned around that, including some uh, grocery store tours that, are, that our nutrition staff's going to be working on. Um, and uh, Robin Hyde just finished her chair uh, for the North Carolina WIC Association. She uh, was the president of that association this past year, so she is uh, now the past president. So that's good news. And the last thing I do have, oh, that's why I needed to be back there. I've got a video I wanted to show you that just came out. Uh, this is a video that was produced uh, by the North Carolina uh, Health Directors Association, but it's, uh, uh, I think, a very positive video about what local public health is doing. And I can pull that up. connected by the desire to live healthy lives. You better yourself through discipline and hard work, and you educate yourself to make better health decisions for you and your family. And your local health department in North Carolina wants you to know that you are not alone. We're striving to help you build a healthier life. By saving North Carolinians over $16 billion per year in potential health care costs, every year we serve over 100,000 patients and provide over 1 million services to protect the public, promote health, and prevent disease in North Carolina. It's all about you and your future. We want you to experience full quality and quantity of life. We're working with you so you can enjoy more of the important moments that matter. This is public health in North Carolina, working every day, many times unseen, to help make the healthy choice the easier choice through community change. Taking care of you and your environment. We are here every day, everywhere, for every person. We are the local health department of the North Carolina Public Health System. Together, we can build a healthier and smarter future for North Carolina. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Is that it? Okay. Okay, at this time, I'd like to need a motion to go into closed session pertaining to GS 143-318.11A6. So moved. Second. And that's to consider the qualifications, competence, performance, character, fitness, conditions of appointment, or conditions of initial employment of an individual, public officer, or employee. Thank you. I have a motion and I have a second. All in favor of going into closed session? Aye. 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 Aye.